Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Miss Lydia from the Boston Library. Thank you so much for joining me for story time today. Today, we are talking about apples. And our first book is called Up, Up, Up. It's Apple Picking Time by Jody Fikes Shapiro. Up, 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 it's apple picking time. Mama's voice tickles my ear and whispers me awake. On with my shirt, sweater, pants, warm socks, and shoes not tied. Outside, it feels as if we're the only ones awake in the whole world. Dad says, it's a long drive ahead. Amber uses my shoulder for her pillow, but I don't mind. She's keeping me warm while we're driving, driving, driving to the apple ranch. Two picnics later, one for breakfast, one for lunch, we're finally off the highway and onto the twisting, bumpy, narrow bridge, one car only, apple tree lined road. You see all those apple trees? There they are. Granny and Grandpa standing at the gate calling, hooray, we're so glad you're finally here. We could hardly wait. Neither could we, we say. Then everyone is off to the orchard. It's apple picking time. Apple smell is in the air. Apple perfume everywhere. There are so many trees and it looks like a million apples, red, green, yellow, and pink. I don't know where to start, I tell Grandpa. He pulls a yellow apple off a tree, puts it up to his nose and breathes in like Mama does with a flower. Ah, it's perfect apple aroma, says Grandpa, and we lean in close and smell it too. From his pocket, he takes out his red handled knife and cuts a slice out of the apple. Have a taste, he says. The apple is cool and crunchy and sweet. Everyone has a slice and we all stand together in the afternoon sunshine, wishing we could have more, but it's apple picking time. Begin with this golden delicious, Miles, Grandpa tells me. He points to the tree where we're standing and hands me a small sack made from cloth. I give the tiniest little tug and the yellow fruit almost falls into my hand it's as big as my softball. The sack gets heavy fast. Every time it's full, I empty it into a wooden field box. We climb up ladders and disappear into the trees. I can see dad's legs. His voice is coming from the middle of a tree filled with red apples. He's singing a made up song about loving apple dumplings and eating apple pie. You see his legs sticking out there. The tree next to him has Mama's laugh. That's the only way I can tell she's in it. Amber and Granny are picking up fruit from the ground. Granny says these apples make the best cider. The mention of cider makes me want some. It's warm work picking apples. I say it already smells as if the cider is hiding somewhere in the orchard. That's apple orchard perfume you're smelling, Miles, says Granny. And then she surprises us with cups of cool apple juice. All afternoon, we fill those apple sacks with delicious, both red and golden, Macintosh, Pippin, Winter Banana, a funny name for an apple if you ask me, and the last few stray Gravensteins. The wagon cart is loaded with boxes filled to the brim. Daylight runs out fast in the canyon, even in the summer. Granny's Pippin Pie makes a fine end to an apple picking day. Early to bed, have to be well rested for apple selling day. Up, 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 it's apple selling time, Grandpa whis Grandpa's whiskers scratch my cheek, and the smell of breakfast cooking pulls me out of bed. It's Grandpa's morning oatmeal with sweet applesauce and then we're out to the fruit stand through the dew wet grass. Grandpa turns over the carved wooden sign and cars pull in. Granny, 
wearing a big straw hat trimmed all around with shiny apples, greets old friends. These are the grandkids come to help, she almost sings the words. Apples are tasted, admired, and bought. We carry bags and boxes of apples to cars for people who come and go all morning. Lunch is a picnic in the sunshine, but we can hardly sit still enough to eat. It's apple sewing time. And then, before you can say, Macintosh Granny Smith Golden Delicious Pippin Pie, the sun has flown away, taking the warmth with it. The sign is turned to closed. It's time to call it a day. Summer, or supper, is fresh baked apple dumplings floating like islands in a sea of milk. Then there's talking about the apple selling day. Grandpa puts old jazz records on his phonograph and dances around with Amber. Even Mama and Dad dance. But I like lying on the rug in front of the fireplace, just watching everyone being happy, wishing we didn't have to go home tomorrow. It's hard to say goodbye. Hello hugs are so much nicer. Sackfuls of apples surround Amber and me. We're driving, driving, driving home. Their cidery smell helps me remember the happy days of apple picking, apple selling time. Our next book is called Apples for Little Fox by Ekaterina Chunkin. Fox loved to read. Mystery stories were his favorite books. Fox wanted to become a famous detective, just like the ones he read about. Good morning, Mouse. There's Mouse. Fox also loved apples. Every morning he went to the library, and on the way home, he stopped to gather apples that had fallen under the biggest apple tree. Fox read all day, eating apples and imagining that one day he'd solve a mystery too. Every night, Fox wished that something mysterious would happen, but nothing ever did. Nothing at all. What do you see there? Who's taking those apples? Good morning, Mouse. Early one morning, Fox set off for the library, just as he always did. But when he cycled past the apple tree, just as he always did, he noticed something had changed. All the apples were gone. A mystery for me to solve at last. Fox started his investigation. He took photographs of the crime scene. Hello, Fox. Sorry, Bear, I'm too busy to talk right now. Then Fox looked for clues. He used his detective, detecting magnifying glass. He'd been waiting a long time to use it. Hello, Fox. Sorry, Wolf. I'm too busy to talk right now. Fox even questioned a witness. See the little worm? I was asleep, says the witness. Hello, Fox. Sorry, Owl. I'm too busy to talk right now. Hmm, this is more difficult than I thought it would be. Maybe Rabbit can help. He's very clever. So Fox went to visit Rabbit. He had just started to explain the mystery when he smelled something. Sniff, sniff. Something very familiar, something very nice. And there was his very favorite just baked apple pie. Happy birthday, Fox. I forgot it was my birthday, but now I know where all the apples went. In the middle of the party, Fox saw that the whole apple pie had disappeared, but he didn't need to investigate that mystery. What do you think happened to that pie? I think they ate it all. Our last book for today is called Fall Apples Crisp and Juicy by Martha E. H. Ristad. Chapter one, apples in fall. Look, colorful leaves blow in the breeze. The air feels cooler. It is fall. Fall is a good time to visit an apple orchard. Fall is a good time to pick apples. 
Orchards around the world grow about 50 different kinds of apples. Crunch. I bite through the red skin. The crisp white flesh tastes sweet. Juice drips down my chin. Surprise! Tiny dark seeds hide inside the core. Most ripe apples have red skin, but some have yellow or green skin, or even pink. Chapter two, how apples grow. Plop, an apple seed falls into the soil. Roots grow down and the stem grows up. Drip, just enough rain helps the seed become a sprout. And just enough sunlight helps the sprout become a tree. When an apple seed grows into a tree, its apples are different from the apples that made the seed. To grow a certain kind of apple, orchards attach a stem from one tree to the roots of another, and then they grow together. Green leaves bud and spread, leaves soak up warm sunlight. So we see our leaves getting bigger and bigger. Sunlight becomes food for the growing tree. Some trees start to grow apples three to five years after they're planted. Sniff. I smell the sweet flowers. In the spring, white and pink apple blossoms bloom. Buzz. Bees drink nectar from apple flowers. Pollen from the flowers stick to their bodies. And bees spread the pollen from tree to tree. Apple blossoms need pollen from another kind of apple tree to grow fruit. Bees and other insects spread pollen from the flowers on one tree to the flowers on another tree. Pollen from another tree fertilizes the flowers and then the petals fall. Tiny green fruitlets form. And during the summer, fruitlets grow into big apples. Pickers harvest apples in the fall. Ripe apples pile up. Apple pickers are gentle. They twist off only the apple and the stem. No apple will grow there next year if they pull off the spur that connects the stem to the tree. Chapter three, using apples. Let's visit the orchard's kitchen. Bakers peel, core, and cut apples to make pies. Ding! The pie is done. It smells like cinnamon and baked apples. My teeth crush the crisp crust. About half of the U.S. apple crop is eaten fresh. People make the rest into jelly, cider, juice, vinegar, apple butter, applesauce, or pie filling. Let's make apple cider. About 40 apples are pressed to make one gallon of apple cider. Whirr, the grinder turns. It smashes the apples into a pulp and squish. The press squeezes the apple pulp and cider trickles out. We drink the cider. It looks cloudier than apple juice. It tastes sweet and tart, yum. Apple juice makes makers heat and filter cider to make the juice. Goodbye, Orchard. Let's visit again next fall. Now is the perfect time to go apple picking. So if you get an opportunity to go out and pick some apples, enjoy the sunshine and have fun. We'll see you next week.